President Bush today defended the decision to bail out Citigroup, and he suggested that he and Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson might step in to stabilize other financial institutions before they leave office. Secretary Paulson is working closely uh, with the uh, uh, President-elect's transition team. It's important for the American people to know that there is close cooperation. It's important for the American people to know that we will safeguard the financial system as the first step necessary for financial uh, for economic recovery. All right, let's bring in CNN chief business correspondent Ali Valshi. Ali, good to have you with us. We've heard Citigroup described as too big to fail. So was this bailout necessary? Well, C Citigroup and uh, eight other banks are considered systemically important financial institutions uh, under the bailout program, which means that they are, their tentacles are so, uh, so, so they're, they're everywhere. And, and a failure of one of these banks wouldn't be an isolated event. It would affect a lot of people with mortgages and with loans and, and with deposits. And if it were to fail, the government would be online on the hook for some of those deposits anyway. So there was a sense that uh, they needed to be involved here. The other thing is the plan to fix Citigroup was a negotiation with government officials, with Treasury, with the Fed. Congress was involved in this, uh, and it comes with some uh, some stipulations that weren't in the $700 billion bailout. For instance, Citigroup is going to have to limit certain executive compensation, won't be able to issue uh, golden parachutes to departing executives. It can't use this money. It's got to restrict some of its dividend payments, which means the money can't go to enrich shareholders. Uh, the government is getting stock in return for its loan to Citigroup, and Citigroup has got to restructure some of the mortgages that it holds for troubled homeowners. So there are real strings attached to this. Uh, and the market reaction today has been phenomenal. Why? Not just because of Citigroup, but because there's some sense that there's now a model in place for dealing with those other banks that uh, that President Bush announced they might have to deal with. And and it seems like a relatively positive solution. So this is a sort of a, a you know evolving as it goes situation. Uh, they also some of that market reaction you're looking at is also because of this uh, all-star economic team that uh, that Obama has put into place, uh, largely thought of as being a very very capable team. Is number one and number two. Uh, picks for Treasury Secretary, long thought to be Tim Geithner and Larry Summers, are now both going to be part of this economic team. And there's some sense that this is the right team to fix uh, the situation we've got. But now, the question remains, what will that fix look like? What will the economic sti stimulus plan look like? And we're not getting that information just yet. Yeah, Ali, and as you said, the market responding very favorably. We were just looking at the Dow. Looks like it's closed up almost 400 yeah. points today. In that uh, conversation uh, we were just having about Citigroup, you were saying about how they have to restructure some of those mortgages. And we know the housing right. crisis, huge part of the reason the economy is in such a mess right now. We've heard that sales of existing homes fell more than expected last month. And take a look at this, Ali. The national median price for an right. existing home dropped to $183,000. $300 in October. That's down over 11% from a year ago when the median price was over yeah. $206,000. So, Ali, what does this tell you about well, the here's economic the thing. outlook? Look at those numbers. The, the price of the house is down more than 20000 bucks. The median price of an existing home. We talk about existing homes. That's what we know of as used homes, a house that's already there as opposed to buying a new home. That's the overwhelming majority of all the homes for sale. But look at that. The price is down more than $20,000. The interest rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage isn't substantially higher. You, you're still paying in that 6 to 6.5% 6 range. So that's the interesting part. And that what happens is as these uh, home prices come down, at some point they start to feel affordable to people if they are able to get the credit. And that's the hope, that if you keep the banks of the world going and people can still get loans to buy uh, to buy homes and the price of homes is coming down at some point reasonable people start to say that's a good deal for a home they start moving in and that's how home prices start to move up it doesn't address the job situation which is uh, confronting uh, Obama and his team but this might mean that we're getting closer to a solution it might not be low enough for most people yet but it's certainly getting there yeah I guess the question will be when will it be low enough when might we start to see things turning around well we've seen it in some states we've already seen the states that that were hardest hit, Nevada, California, Florida, Arizona, some of those states, we've already started to see an uptick in buying. So uh, it depends how far. You see, these are median numbers that are across the country. In some places, the, the drop has been far more significant, and in those places, you're starting to see people uh, buying homes. And Ali, you were just touching on job uh, numbers there. We have uh, some data out tomorrow that should tell us uh, about the overall health of the economy, right? Yeah, well, we've got a revision to the, the GDP. You know, GDP comes in sort of four installments. You get a number, and then you get a revision. We'll get some sense of that. But the jobs number is really the number of all economic numbers that you really have to hone in on. We know that we've lost 1.2 million jobs so far this year, uh, and that doesn't count November and December. We'll probably add another half a million jobs 
at least to that loss. So we're going to be up close to two million jobs lost by the time uh, President-elect Obama becomes President Obama. And his speech today, he said, boy, we could see millions more. That is underlying all of this. That's the biggest issue right now. Everything else can be solved. If you don't have an income, that's a problem. Right. And we know that he has this plan to try to add millions of jobs. Uh, right. But obviously, that's a tough undertaking in this climate. Well, hard to know how you create jobs. I mean, uh, uh, John McCain said you lower business taxes and businesses use that money uh, to, to hire people. Uh, the, the way they're looking at right now is an infrastructure building program, possibly fixing the roads and the bridges and the electrical system in this country and maybe part of Barack Obama's alternative energy uh, economy that he wants to build. But I think that's what they're spending their time thinking about. Where, where do you get the best bang for your buck? You know, an economist told me, Namwa, that, uh, you know, if you, if you have a little kid and you take him to the park, that's really the best analogy. When you push a swing for a kid, it only works if you push the swing when the kid's right up near you. If the swing's over there and you push it, you're not going to get anything. That's what, where, where are we in the economy and where can that push be most effective? That's kind of what they're thinking about. All right, I like that analogy, something everybody can understand. Right. Ali Belshi, thank you very much for breaking it all down for us. Okay.